Now that we have Pro installed, I'd like to go through all of the advanced fields for you. So we're actually going to create a crazy Frankenstein of a form that has every field type on it. Now that I have Pro installed, though, I wanted to show you that all of these templates are available. So you could just go in and pick whichever one you want. So we're going to go with a blank form. All right, the first one we'll look at is file upload, and there's not much to it. Uh, this is what's going to show on the front end of the site. The maximum upload size is taken from your server settings. So my maximum is 314.573. I don't know why that's a weird number. But whatever your server allows is um, what will show there. We can change the field label to be something like um, upload photo or something like that. And you could make it required or read only. This will show the field, but not allow the field value to be edited from the front end. You can optionally allow multiple files to be uploaded. You can attach this file to the email notification if you wish. And you can permanently delete old files when they are replaced or when the entry is deleted. You can automatically resize, resize files before upload. So when a large image is uploaded, resize it before you save it to your site. This usually means JPEG compression and can make the file upload faster because it's smaller before it starts the upload. You can determine what file types are allowed. So all file types is a little dangerous because then they can upload something nefarious. If you're doing something like uh, a photo, you can say specify allowed file types, and then you can choose as many of these as you want. So this is really all of them. But a really easy one is to just say GIF, JPEG, or PNG. And now you can only really do the common web images. You can set a max file size that will override your servers. So we'll say uh, one megabyte. And then max files per entry. So up here, you could say allow multiples, but you could say really only two. Um, we're going to do just the one. Upload text, drop a file here or click to upload. I don't really recommend changing that. That's pretty standard and people know how to use it. Um, compact upload text is choose file. And then there are CSS layout classes, which work just like the other ones. You can resize this. Under advanced, you can change the default value and the field description. You can change visibility so that um, if you want, you can make it so only certain people can see it. You can change the label position, and then there's the field key and validation messages just like normal. So next, let's look at date. Date is really just a text field with some JavaScript applied to make it so that it can only hold a date. You can have a year range plus or minus 10 from now to plus 10 from now. Uh, this can be useful for credit card dates. You could say only in the future and only five years or something like that. You can have it required. You can have it be unique so that you can't have two fields with the same date in it. And again, you can use read only so it can be edited on the front end. For advanced options, you can say how many characters are allowed. You can put something in before input and after input, which isn't going to show in the back end. There's your visibility, label position, field type is date, calendar localization. You can change uh, calendar localization because different countries render dates in different orders, different ways. So that's our date. Next is a scale, 1 through 10, and it's radio buttons. You can rate me. Again, required and unique. You can set the range from 0 to 20. And under advanced, just the normal uh, default value and field description. 
Next is a slider. It doesn't function in the admin area, but you can have a number range from zero to whatever. The step is how many integers the dragger will jump. So right now, it's, you could do 51, 52, etc. If you set that at 10, then the net would jump from 50 to 60, up to 100, etc. Under advanced, you can do before input and after input again. You could put in a currency sign here for before input and put a dollar or something so that it indicates that it's $50 as opposed to 50 sheep or something like that. Um, if you wanted 50 sheep, you could put it in after input. So that's how the slider looks. Let's pause real quick and preview in theme. So there's the uploader. You can see it's one megabyte. Here's the date. Here is scale. And here's the slider. So now let's go back and we'll add some more fields. Dynamic. This field is not set up yet. A dynamic field is exceptionally powerful. Basically, it pulls in information from other form submissions. Let me show you how it works. We're going to start right here at dynamic options. We're going to load our options from, you can either do a category or a taxonomy or form entry. Then we're going to select the form. We'll do event registration because we have the most entries there. And we're going to say name. So I'm going to save this real quick. And then we will preview it in the theme. So now it's a drop down list. And you may recall we had three entries on the event registration form one for Bob, two for me. And now we can choose any of those. This isn't a great example. A better one would be uh, categories if I had a bunch of categories. Um, but say you had say you had a bunch of categories from a travel blog or something, you could include them all here and then people could choose from them. Um, and you can I made a drop down list, but we could make it be um, radio buttons. So we'll update that and preview again. And you can see Bob toe for toe. If say you were doing categories, we would make it, we could make it checkboxes. And then people could select more than one. So this is actually really useful for people to categorize their posts from existing categories. So if, say you have a travel blog, and people are submitting photos of uh, a certain country and there's a category full of cities, then you could easily make a checkbox list of all of those cities without having to do it manually. Now let's look at the repeater. A repeater basically just makes it possible to repeat a field or field set. So if you like had uh, a set of radio buttons, you could repeat that. And here's how it works. There aren't really very many settings for this at all. We'll take a look at them. You can call it something else. Um, we'll say uh, guests. We'll choose no automatic formatting. And we're not going to mess with the grid stuff at all. Um, under advanced, there's just a field description, repeat limit. So you can only have, we'll say, five guests. And now we're going to go back to add fields. And we're going to drag in are repeatables. So I'm only going to put one in there and you can see it puts add remove buttons there. And if I click this, now I can say uh, at least one is required. If I click the add remove, I can change those label. So I could say add guest. Remove guest. So let's update and take a look at that. So I could say 
Oh, we forgot to change the label. It says text. Let's change that to guest. There, it says guest name. Now we could say Bob, Larry, Daryl. Another Larry. And say Judy. And there are no more add buttons because we limited it to five. So now we've added five guests. And that's how repeatable works. So after repeatable, we'll look at page break. And if you click it, all there really is to do is change the button. So we could say continue if we wanted. And that's it. And I'll show you in a minute what that looks like. So next we'll throw in a password. And we can optionally require a strong password, which requires at least eight characters. It includes an uppercase letter, a lowercase letter, a number, and a character. You can show a password strength meter, which I like. We'll do that. Um, I recommend requiring a strong password. You can uh, require a confirmation, which basically makes a second field. Again, the CSS classes uh, under advanced, the, all the normal stuff. Um, let's go back here and we'll put in a summary. This field displays a summary of the values entered on previous pages. You can exclude HTML, hidden, user ID, password, and fields hidden with visibility. So I'm going to put in a page break right here between password and summary. So we can upload a file. I'm not going to do that. I didn't make it required. We'll choose a date. We'll set a rating. Our slider's at 29. We'll choose Bob. And Larry and Daryl and one more Daryl. So just three guests. And now there's a continue button. And here's our password. And it says the requirements. So eight characters. And no, I don't want the password saved in there. So one lowercase letter, one uppercase letter, one number, one special character, and then some other stuff. Now we have previous and next buttons. So we could go back and, and change the values we had before. But then we do next. And here is our summary. So people can choose to view what they entered and either go back or hit submit. That's all we're going to cover in this video. We did this column. In the next video, we're going to do the other column. So be sure to watch the next one because there's some good stuff in here too.